the Prophet ﷺ taught us that if you don't have anything constructive to do after Salat al Isha, go to bed. Why? Wife is waiting for you. The problem with us, we'll go to bed but still be on WhatsApp until 2 in the morning, right? Subhanallah. The wife tosses and turns this way and that way. I hope it's not the other way around, mashallah. But tossing, turning, and you're not getting the message. Subhanallah. She's trying to touch you and you say, hey, wait. But where is the Islam in you? Your Islam should make you think, why am I taught to come to bed here? For what? I'm supposed to go to bed because I have a spouse. Why did you get married if you don't want to spend the nights with your wife? For what? Sit with her, talk to her, play with her, be intimate with her, fulfill her rights, satisfy her, go to bed, get up for Salatul Fajr or Tahajjud, and don't be ashamed to have a shower. Even if the whole house knows what happened at night, so what? It was halal. So the Prophet Sallallahu used to dress up for who? For his family. How many of you? And I challenge you, it's a Friday. We're talking of the best husband, the most, the, the most blessed of all creation, the highest in rank of all. I tell you one thing, we need to follow him. Let's not just pay lip service to it. It's not just about lip service, my beloved brothers and sisters. Dress up, you go home, take pride in your hair, take pride in your clothing, what you look like, you, what you smell like. You come home, they should look at you and feel attracted. Come on. The Prophet ﷺ was intimate with his spouses and he fulfilled that right of his spouses. How many of us, a month passes, we haven't even been intimate with our halal wife. She's busy waiting. She's dressing up. She's trying to attract you. So I'm tired. You're tired for what? There's an ibadah to happen at night. Some of us might be weak for tahajjud, but you can't come and complain that you cannot be intimate with your own spouse. You get a similar reward. Wallahi. And I'm not ashamed to speak about it. I've spoken about it several times because men are guilty of thinking that women don't have sexual needs. This was the Prophet ﷺ. He tells the companions, Fi budu'i ahadikum sadaqa. Remember when you're intimate with your wife and you fulfill her needs and you satisfy her, it is an act of charity. The Sahaba were rightly so. They asked a the question, oh wow, is it really a charity? He says, well, if you put it in haram, would you get a sin? So. They said, yes, we would get a sin. Well, if you put it in halal in a proper way and you're conscious of the fulfilling of the rights, you definitely get a reward. The problem with us is we're focused on another woman somewhere outside. That's what it is. We're focused on another person outside. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah protect all of us. Now, when you come home and it's halal and it's a sadaqah and it's a charity and your wife has been waiting for you and at times she's actually looking forward to it. She's protected herself as best as she can. And you know what? You just say, I'm tired. Tired for what? If there was a football match, you would have forgotten your tiredness. May Allah forgive us.